So let's talk about the next topic, which is basically your pneumothorax. Okay, so next what we are going to talk about is a pneumothorax. So what is a pneumothorax? Okay, so let's look at this particular kind of uh, image first. Okay, so what is this? This is an image of your uh, pneumothorax okay now this is a very very important thing i'm pretty sure that most of you uh, would be kind of aware of these particular kind of x-rays and everything but i hope you're able to understand that over here what you need to understand is that this particular part of the lung appears more black okay so this is what is going to appear more black as compared to this one okay so this is appearing more black as compared to the opposite side and that is why what you need to understand is that this is what is a pneumothorax i hope you are able to appreciate this particular point guys okay so do not get confused guys okay i'm pretty sure that nine out of ten of you guys would be knowing this particular x-ray but those one person like whatever the ten percent of the people who might get confused between the pneumothorax and the other x-rays please try to understand over here that this particular part of the lung which is appearing more black so what is this this is what this is what is your what you call as a uh yeah, so like the lung has basically collapsed. So collapsed lung, that is, this is what is your collapsed lung. And this is appear more black as compared to the rest of the lung. Why? Because the bronchovascular markings are missing over there. Okay. So because of the loss of bronchovascular markings, that particular part of the lung is appearing more black. I hope you have understood this particular point. Guys. Okay. Right. So this is what is a pneumothorax. So what is a pneumothorax? Pneumothorax is simply a condition where there is air in the thoracic cavity. Okay. So there is air in the thoracic cavity that is what is referred to as your pneumothorax as simple as that okay so what is a pneumothorax pneumothorax is basically a patient who is basically having air in the thoracic cavity now uh, how is the presentation of the patient so if i ask you how is the patient going to present to you presentation of the patient with the pneumothorax how it is going to be so let's assume that you are the person who is basically like the in charge of the trauma center okay and there's a patient who is coming to you when you examine this particular patient how is this particular patient going to come to you the patient is basically going to come to you in the state of respiratory distress okay so what is the patient going to have the patients are going to have respiratory distress okay so what are the patients going to have patients are going to have respiratory distress that is the first thing okay now if at all there is a patient who is having a respiratory distress you examine this particular patient on examination what are you going to find you're going to find that the trachea is basically deviated towards the opposite side so let's assume that there is a history that the trauma has happened to the left side of the chest or something like that okay so trauma has happened to the left side of the chest and the trachea has deviated towards the right side okay so that is what is going to be the history over here that is the trachea is deviated to the opposite side okay so trachea is deviated towards the opposite side then what are you going to do so this is what you're going to get on the examination on examination this is what you're going to get what is the next step okay so you are basically going to auscultate os so when you auscultate what are you going to find on auscultation you're going to find that there is an absence of the breath sounds okay so what are you going to find you're going to find that there is absence of the breath sound okay absence of the breath sound is kind of there okay on auscultation and finally you are going to have percussion okay so on percussion what you're going to find that there is a hyper resonant note okay then what you're going to find is a hyper resonant that is what you're going to find over here you understand my point so a patient is going to come to you with a respiratory distress the trachea is basically deviated towards the opposite side on auscultation you have an absence of the breath sound and you on the percussion you have a hyper resonant note so these are the features which are going to help you in diagnosing the patients as a pneumothorax now how do you basically distinguish this from the patients with the hemothorax so please try to understand in the patients with the hemothorax there is going to be the respiratory distress the trachea will be deviated towards the opposite side there is going to be the absence of the breath sounds but on the percussion what you're going to find is a dull note so if at all the question gives you this okay so if at all the question says that you know what there is a respiratory distress trachea deviated to the opposite side absence of the breath sounds and the dull note then what you have a diagnosis you have a diagnosis of a hemothorax in in reference to the trauma this can also happen in your what you call as a pleural effusion but in with reference to the trauma you are basically dealing with the hemothorax okay i hope you have understood this point now there are two things okay in the pneumothorax in the 
pneumo thorax what you need to understand is that there can be two types so what are the two types of the pneumothorax you have something which is called as a simple pneumothorax and then you have something which is called as a tension pneumothorax are you understanding my point so what we have is a simple pneumothorax and then we have a tension pneumothorax these are the two things which we have now uh, what is the basic difference between a simple pneumothorax and a tension pneumothorax okay so in the patients with the simple pneumothorax what you need to understand is that there is a two way communication of air between the thoracic cavity and external atmosphere okay so in the simple pneumothorax what is happening that there is a two-way communication whenever you breathe in the air basically you goes into the end of external atmosphere and then it again comes back to the thoracic cavity so there is a two-way communication what about the tension pneumothorax in the tension pneumothorax what you need to understand is that there is a one-way communication so with every breath with every breath you take the pressure in the thoracic cavity increases are you understand my point so with every breath you take what is going to happen the pressure inside the thoracic cavity is going to increase so this is what is called as a tension pneumothorax simple pneumothorax two way communication tension pneumothorax with every breath you take what is going to happen there is going to be the built up of the pressure inside the thoracic cavity i hope you are able to understand this particular point guys okay and how are you going to distinguish it on the basis of your examination so what you need to understand is that you have a pneumothorax pneumothorax in this what did we what you call just wise respiratory distress along with this the trachea is deviated to the opposite side i told you that along with this what is going to be happening there's going to be an absence of the breath sounds i told you that there's going to be a hyper resonant note hyper resonant note on percussion so along with this along with this if at all the patients are also having what you refer to as hemodynamic instability and increased jvp so jugular vein is uh, like jugular veins are basically distended and there is a hemodynamic instability i understand my point so if along with all these particular four features if at all you along with this you also have hemodynamic instability and the raised jvp then you have a diagnosis of what you refer to as a tension pneumothorax okay i hope you have understood this point very 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 important okay right okay now finally what you need to understand over here is the management how do you manage the patients okay so uh, let's first talk about the tension pneumothorax only in the tension pneumothorax the management what you basically want to talk about is there's something which is called as an emergency management and there is something which is called as a definitive management so what is an emergency management the emergency management is basically insertion of a wide bore needle okay the emergency management is insertion of the wide bore needle but that is basically different so different for the adults and the children okay so the question which they basically ask you is that where do you insert this particular wide bore needle in the adults and where do you kind of insert this particular wide bore needle in the children so please try to understand in the adults what you do is you insert a wide bore needle in the fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line okay so you basically put it in the fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line in the children what you do is here you insert a wide bore needle in the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular 
Are you understand my point? So this is what you need to understand over here. Okay. So in the adults, white bone needle in the fifth intercostal space in the mid axial line. In the children, white bone needle is basically uh, inserted in the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line. Okay. I hope you have understood this point. And then when we talk about the definitive management. Okay. If we talk about the definitive management. So what is the definitive management over here? So please try to understand the definitive management is insertion of an ICT. You put an intercostal drain in the fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line. Okay. Mid axillary line. Okay. I hope you are able to understand this particular point. Why this is, why there is an emergency management over here? Because if you talk about the tension pneumothorax, the patient is in the state of a hemodynamic instability. So this is what is referred to as the emergency, emergency situation, right? If you don't manage it within minutes, the patients might not survive. And for insertion of an ICD intercostal drain, it might take some more time. Okay. And you might not have that much of time to kind of wait because the patients might not survive and that is why in the emergency situation you put a wide bore needle in the adults you basically put it in the fifth intercostal space in the mid axial line in the children you basically put it in the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line i hope you have understood this